round three. We are just leaving my house now. About to get in the car to go to Opex Gatwick. Today is Metcon day. Lower body day is done. Upper body day is done. As you know, because you've obviously seen the first two videos. Uh, a bit of cardio. I'm kind of on the clock, actually. I've got to move quickly, but sometimes I like that. The urgency is good. And we are here again. As I said, Metcon day today. Uh, lower body done on Monday. Upper body done on Tuesday. I'm chewing some nicotine gum. At the moment, this is a, a little known weapon that I keep in my knapsack. I don't know why I said knapsack. Um, for a rainy day, only kind of really used on particularly challenging Metcon days. And I'm in front of the camera, you guys are watching. I want to make sure I perform well today. Um, and it's something that I, only, I make sure, because of it, its notoriously addictive qualities, that I only use once every, I don't know, couple of weeks, and I haven't used it probably in about three weeks, actually. Um, Kind of a cognitive enhancer, it doesn't really spike your heart rate, not that I'm aware of, but just sharpens your mind. And combined with caffeine, I think nicotine can actually be quite a good uh, a good tool. Heard about it from Ben Greenfield, ah, kind of the godfather of modern biohacking in my opinion. If you haven't read Boundless, please do so, or at least buy it, it's about 50 quid. As much information as, you know, an old school encyclopedia, but it's amazing. Um, gonna get warmed up, quick bit of rolling out, then gonna get warm. And then I shall share with you the impending torture that awaits me. So as I mentioned, um, I'm kind of on the clock. I've got to get through this fairly quickly. And again, the stuff is, is timed under certain time restraints anyway, with today's Metcon session. But I quite like feeling the time pressure. As I said in the car, man, like, lockdown for me, because I'm kind of, I've got a natural neurological wiring, I think, to be understimulated quite a lot. So the fact that I have to move quickly in a session, that doesn't, that doesn't kind of push me over the, the optimal arousal levels, it kind of pushes me a little bit higher and closer to a level where I would uh, enjoy a little bit more. It kind of keeps me moving, otherwise I kind of get bored and get distracted and I might just honestly kind of piss about and just waste a little bit of time unnecessarily. So um, it's quite good for me, I think, to, uh, to have a little bit of urgency. I There's a little bit of a buy-in, I think, for today's, I'll check it in a second, but for today's Metcon session, so what I might do is I might just do a few bits, a few kind of star jumps and some dynamic, star jumps. How old school PE is that? Uh, and a few dynamic drills uh, on the turf. But then from that point, I think the nice light buy-in, I probably I might use that as kind of a, the second half of my warm up anyway. Then take a quick breath and then jump straight in. And I think by that point I will be adequately warm. I hope so. Don't try this at home. Please make sure you are appropriately warmed up. This is just me doing something that may well snap my spine. But I've got to be somewhere, so it's a risk I'm willing to take. So, unless it's a nice warm day, which it was on Monday and Tuesday, <laughs> I say nice warm day, it was about 12 degrees. But in March in the UK, that is as good as we can flip and hope for. Uh, unless it's a nice warm day, as it was the last couple of days, um, so I was kind of warming up in a t-shirt and shorts. I actually weirdly like to, to warm up wearing a jacket or like a hoodie uh, and a base layer underneath, just so that I feel super, super, super warm. Probably again, fall out, not necessarily from sprinting days, but definitely from bobsleigh day days, ironically, in kind of those minus temperatures. But I like to warm up, get myself moving, I like to feel sweaty and feel almost uncomfortably warm. And then it's like a bit of a mental switch. When I take a jacket off or when I take that hoodie off, that's like a nice association that, right, the warm up is complete and now it's kind of, it's H hour, and now it's kind of game time. So for me, I like to have those nice, consistent, kind of procedures and protocols and habits for my own training that allow me to know what kind of stage I'm in of the session uh, and when I need to kind of flick a switch in my mind. 
and when I need to apply a little bit more effort and be a little bit more assertive. And for me, one of those things is just getting super warm, warm up in a jacket. As soon as the jacket comes off, then I know uh, that I'm ready to roll. And today is not particularly warm by anyone's standards. It's about seven or eight degrees. So with that, that's why I'm in the jacket. Starting to feel a little bit sweaty already. A couple of drills left. Get a little bit moist underneath this layer and, uh, and then we'll crack on with the mono stuff. I think it is now that time. Like I said yesterday, high knees for any workout and kind of quick dynamic, almost sprint warm up drills. For me, it's just an amazing way for so much bloody looser afterwards. Doesn't matter how much kind of slow warming cardio I do at the beginning, doesn't matter how many statics I do. It's those really, really quick, dynamic, ballistic, explosive drills that I do as kind of an extension of my warm up that get me to a stage where I'm feeling loose, feeling mobile and feeling a little bit quicker. So regardless of the session, even yesterday's, which is upper body, chest, shoulder girdle, everything feels a little bit looser with some rapid arm drives that obviously go hand in hand with some quick knee drives. So we are about ready to, oh, man. we're about to ready to crack on with the monostructural element of the session. So there's basically there's two parts of a uh, conventional March and performance program on a Wednesday. The first one is some kind of monostructural piece and the second one is a little bit more mixed modal, literally called mixed modal. Um, and it says, it literally says, run or ski or row. And of course I have to decide to be flipping annoying and do this instead. But from my understanding, the whole purpose of a monostructural set is to improve your capacity, both aerobically as standard and specifically to the piece of kit that you're using. And, uh, I'm not a massive fan of the rower here. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit loose. I need to get on that and tighten it up myself. Uh, my running overall at the moment is okay. It's feeling quite smooth. And I've done a lot of ski work recently. And my lactic tolerance is a lot worse than my aerobic tolerance, which means what is the factor that would prevent me from going faster or going harder. And for this specifically, it is my lactic threshold on the assault bike. Shut up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sub this in instead. Uh, it's a three minute check-in, one minute easy, one minute moderate, one minute hard. There's then three minutes break. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of use this as an extension of my warm up. I'm fairly warm already. Um, and then I'm gonna do five rounds of one minute at hard effort and two minutes rest. Then I'm gonna record uh, the distance of each round. I'm a big fan of this kind of programming. And one of the reasons for that, well, there's two reasons. One, I kind of prefer short, sharp stuff anyway, as opposed to, uh, longer, slightly more kind of steady state work. And the second thing is this, in regards to, I'm 33 now, in regards to the kind of the future of my involvement in any kind of functional fitness world, I'm, the likelihood is I'm gonna be in either a pair or a team. I prefer um, just my natural wiring being a part of a group and I feel as though I literally, even in a competitive environment on my own, I probably pull back a little bit. Whereas if I'm part of a team, I know I'm gonna dig out a little bit harder. And the way that programs work in the functional fitness world is it's very, very unlikely that there's gonna be any event, any team or pair event, where every individual is required to continue working without a break. The chances are it's gonna be a lot more stop-start. So interval training is more relevant, in my opinion, to team athletes or pair athletes or whatever, just call them team athletes, uh, as opposed to individual athletes. Basically, the way the programming is is done, inevitably, you are gonna to have to push a little bit harder, but have a little bit of a break when you're kind of tagged out for a little bit. So three minute easy check-in, hope that made sense by the way. Three minute easy check-in, uh, three minutes break, and then we crack on with the five flipping disgusting rounds, and I hate this piece of equipment, but I do not want my hatred of this to prevent me from using it. On the contrary, I find out, I try to introspect and be fairly honest and objective with myself. What do I least want to do? Because what do I believe, believe personally, um, for me subjectively, is the biggest hole in my game? And at the moment, I know it's this. So I have to do it.
Check in done. Feeling pretty good, three minute break now. And then we're into the quick stuff. As I alluded to a minute ago, I think it's always important when you're doing conditioning work to try and introspect and look at what is the weakest link of your game, even in the endurance world specifically. So again, for me, I know, ironic as it might sound now that I'm puffing and panting, but aerobically I feel okay. It's just quad lactic that's super hard. Being a sprinter, you only really make contact with the ground from there to there, and then you're in kind of this cyclical phase of bringing the knee up, extending, putting it back and clawing away at the ground a little bit. So kind of contact time is absolutely minimal. So for this, and I know it's been a while since I've been doing this kind of work, or should I say, I've been doing this long enough that I should have adapted and I have adapted, but it's still the weakest part of my game, which is why I'm doing this. Absolute lactic burner. Aerobically, I'm not too bad. Lactically, I am terrible. Or at the very least, not where I want to be, which is why we're doing this. Quick sip of water, get some aminos in me, listen to some country music, and crack on with the speed stuff. Four rounds of the five done. My kilometers an hour uh, figure is kind of staying consistent around high 40s, 47, 48. I feel as though I've got a snap, right? I feel as though I've got a bit of quick energy in me. <coughs> but I know I've only got about 10 seconds of it when it comes to the lactic burn. So, on the fifth and final round, that's coming up, I'm gonna keep the same pace for 45 seconds, and then try to take it up to about 55 kilometers an hour. Is that good? I have no idea. I don't really know what other people are doing, because it's locked down, so I can't see anyone, or speak to anyone. I'm very lonely, so it's vulnerable of me to say that, but, 55 kilometers an hour for the last 15 seconds. Let's see how we get on. Distance of that as well. Jesus, my quads, man. That's the thing about any vehicle of exercise, especially that of functional fitness. <clears throat> You're never done. I know it's a cliche, but always humbles you. Always humbles you. As long as you can adopt a mindset, a frame of mind where Humility is calling the shots, and not your ego, especially, especially when it comes to self-programming. It's a good microcosm and vehicle of life, right? You think you're gonna circle something, something feels insurmountable, absolutely dreading it. And then once it's done, you realize you're still alive, and you start to, redesign or reevaluate your own associations with capability and comfort and what both those things mean to you Woo. getting some aminos on board again guys and then on to the mixed modal well thank the lord that is done mixed modal next and what do we have? I hear you cry. So, uh, we have an eight, we have three. Fuck me, man. We have, I really should look at this. <laughs> Actually, no, this is real life. You're seeing my genuine reaction. 
to the sadism of Ollie and Chad Marchin. So, I've got an eight minute arm wrap. I'm doing eight dual dumbbell clean press with uh, 20 kilo dumbbells. We've only got 25. Again, like I mentioned in the video yesterday, all the kit for Opic Scout has been lent out to the members, as it should do. So there's only a few bits left. And the only matching dumbbells, so the only weight that we have two of is 25. Uh, so eight dual dumbbell cleaning press. We have 10 toes to bar and 12 calories, of which I will be doing on the rower. I had a rower, a woa. I had a woa um, during the last lockdown. Used it a lot. And unfortunately that led me into a false sense of security. And over the last few, well, pretty much actually for the last six weeks, I've kind of like doubled down on the other pieces of erg kit. So I haven't really done much. So I'm gonna introduce that back in today. So eight dual dumbbell cleaning press with 25s. Some well hard, isn't it? 10 toes to bar and 12 calories. As many rounds as possible in eight minutes. This is my excited face. Let's go. Spicy, 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 spicy. First of three, arm um, wraps done. Cyclical stuff like, uh, like the dumbbell cleaning press. I'll be honest, I find quite challenging. Again, just, it's not the rhythm that I'm used to with movements like that. Everything starts to blow up quite quickly. That's the reason why I love doing it. Again, cliche, and it's hard to get to, man, it's hard to genuinely develop a propensity and fandom of things that you're not very good at. But the key to making that leap is literally checking your ego in at the door. And again, having a competition coming up where the events are completely unknown helps with that. I also figured out how to connect to the speaker. I'm not too shabby. Week one of this block, so way, way, way back when. Okay, um, that'd be that for the monostructural, so that'd be short. Chad Marchant, I'm watching the Coach's Corner right now, <clears throat> which for those of you that aren't part of this programme, is a weekly thing that Chad normally puts out on a Sunday, guiding us through everything for the week. And as much as I love your dulcet toned brother, it's because uh, we have, what do we have? Dumbbell Piston Thruster. You know what that is? I don't, that's why I'm watching the video. Sharp, and then you're into some mixed modal work which will be three eight-minute arm wraps. First eight-minute arm wrap is going to be eight dual dumbbell cleans, 10 toes to bar and 12 calories. Second one will be eight dual dumbbell piston, piston thrusters, so you're going to dual front wrap your dumbbells. Squat, and then as you come up, you'll just press one overhead, and as you go back into your squat, you'll come up and press the other one up overhead. 10 renegade rows and then 12 calories. That clears it up, thanks very much. So there we go, boys and girls. It has been cleared up with the coach's corner. That's probably a little bit of a gypsy's warning to me that I should actually watch that before embarking on the training week. Uh, so we're doing an eight minute arm wrap of eight dual dumbbell piston thrusters, squatting down basically dual front rack position for the thrusters. And as you extend at the top of the squat, one dumbbell goes up and then you alternate. So eight, effectively four presses on each arm, 10 renegade rows and 12 calories again. Gonna keep the row this time, right? Let's get cracking.
spicy spicy <clears throat> all done with that one that i'll be honest the thrusters were easier than i thought not saying they were easy i think i was just dreading them bloody huge amount so overall i'm uh, quite happy with how that went so now from memory eight dual dumbbell deadlifts 10 uh, suitcase carry walk-in lunges we've done a lot of these recently actually they're feeling better and better really really good for back uh, kind of all the way through the spine and the midline and working on posture staying nice and tall and then 12 calories again again I'm going to stick with the rower A well number one because I need to let's get better at it two it's already there and I don't want to move something else let's go All done. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So, a few years ago, through the course of summer 2013, I trained for about eight weeks at the Parisi Speed School in Fairlawn, New Jersey. There's about, I don't know, 80, 100 of these things around the US. Uh, teaching people how to run, move, basically kind of agility and strength kind of gyms, that's the basic setup for, for like NFL players and stuff, phenomenal facility and I was coached by a guy called Rich Sadiq and he said to me it's like he poisoned my mind with this, he was like if you ever get to the end of a session and you don't think you've trained hard and you've not left it all on the floor like completely binned yourself because I'm a big fan of taking your foot off the gas especially with high frequency programs but if you don't feel as though you executed appropriately and performed hard enough as per kind of the recommended application of effort, your post-workout shake or whatever you have after is gonna taste like shit. And that was <laughs> coming up to eight years ago. And it's still a mantra that I've got now. And it's like, fuck me, man. You kind of incepted that, that idea in my mind, but it's such a, it's such a valuable one, I think. Like, however crap these sessions are. One thing I take from being beasted in Royal Marine training is at least with sessions like this, you know when they're gonna win, or at least you know they're gonna win the same day. Whereas you don't necessarily get that luxury. So all tough sessions now, at least there's a, a level of peace of mind that you get with knowing that it's gonna be over fairly soon. It's like you will do something, give yourself a little treat after the session, whether, you know, nice shower, little bit of mute favorite song, whatever, chocolate truffle, doesn't really matter what it is, but you will not enjoy it unless you know that you've worked appropriately. And as soon as that idea incepts in your head, it's like one of the best things any a coach could possibly say, because now I'm like, my, it's like a curse. It's a crazy American but hex on me. Uh, guys, that is the conditioning session done. Good monostructural stuff uh, that I, again, swapped out the recommended pieces of kit for the assault bike but I do believe that, that was beneficial for me and where my training's at right now and then three separate uh, mixed modal eight minute arm wraps really really good stuff really really happy actually the session kind of felt better as it went on so I'm feeling a lot more myself than I did on Monday or Tuesday hope you did enjoy it guys if you haven't yet done so please do subscribe watch some of the other videos this is my first kind of short series of vlog style uh, I've got some more kind of education and formative pieces, but with some funny cutaways. Well, I think they're funny, funny cutaways and stuff. Please do watch some of the other videos. Uh, have an amazing day, guys. Any questions, please do put them in the comment section down below. Give me a thumbs up. It really does help me build this channel, this lovely community. And 